This dragon was a challenge to paint for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's also a secret compartment box, so there was a lot of functionality that needed to be designed into it, not just the anatomy. Second, it was designed in Fusion 360, so that's great for the structural elements, but there's not a lot of fine detail baked into the model, so that all needs to be added in the painting stage. And finally, I don't have a clear reference picture from this, it's not a copy of something, so there are a lot of stylistic decisions to be made throughout the painting process. When I started painting, I didn't yet have a clear idea of what this was going to look like, but I started by adding in some lights and darks and just generally getting the 3D printed parts covered. It's a bit easier to see the volumes in the model once they are more of a solid color versus having all of these seam lines. In this first coat, I started out by creating my grays using all the three primary colors mixed together in different ratios, plus some white to get the lighter parts. The back of the lower jaw gets painted black so that nothing will show through in that crack where it opens, and also the back sides of all the pieces I painted black just to give it a finished look. I knew that I wanted the horns to be lighter, so I added more white to those areas, and then I thought that maybe the dragon would look nice if it were yellow, because it was just looking kind of bronze or brown muddy color. So I tried the yellow for a couple of minutes and then I quickly got rid of that and went back to grays. Light and dark tones were stippled over some of those smooth facial planes to start giving that some visual texture as if it might be some scales or small feathers. Just trying to break up those planes somewhat. I gave the scales some more details by making them look like they divide down the center using a line of light on dark. And I also started detailing out the eyes somewhat just to get a better idea of the dragon's expression. And this time, I just kept it simple. I put black and white on my palette and used those to create the different values because I noticed that when I was trying to figure out the color at the same time, it was just too many decisions to make at once without a reference image to work from. I needed to minimize the decisions that needed to be made at each step. So right now, just lights and darks, I could focus on that and I could start figuring out where those differences in value could be used to add some more visual texture to the model where there were only simple forms modeled into it. As I was working, I had a heat gun handy just to dry out that paint really fast so I could add an additional layer over top without having to sit there waiting for paint to dry. For this base coating, I was going for more of a painterly look, allowing my brush strokes to show and just trying to build up some different textures with the lights and darks. But there came a point when I was happier with it than before it was painted, but not satisfied with how it was looking. The style just didn't quite mesh with the model. So at this point I pulled out an airbrush. Now I haven't airbrush painted before this, so I was hesitant to jump into a new tool right in the middle of a project, but it just seemed appropriate. So I used the same acrylic paints and just watered them down and added those into the airbrush and started doing the same process of adding lights and darks, but this time with the airbrush, which allows a very smooth blended look versus the painterly brush stroke effect that I was doing earlier. The main thing that I noticed here was how much more quickly I could experiment. Because the airbrush allows the paint to go on in layers, I didn't necessarily have to mix all these different tones of gray or do washes with the brush. I could very quickly build up a light base and then brush in some shadows and just see what it looks like and then change my mind and try something else. So for this where I didn't have a clear direction, the airbrush was a quicker way to iterate. I did the bottom jaw first and honestly I didn't really like it. I'm not huge on the plain airbrushed look, but at the same time I could see the benefits so I kept going with this process. I started adding in airbrushed lights and darks over top of all of that brush painting that I had done, but it did allow me to more quickly and easily and cleanly define some of these volumes and give them a more dramatic look. In retrospect, I would have just used the airbrush first. The hand painting underneath was unnecessary and pretty much just got covered up. My first attempts with the airbrush, I was doing some pretty wide and messy strokes. Then I started experimenting with doing some finer details and adding in some small dots on the face. And that effect started really bringing out this skin kind of texture, whether it's scales or feathers, just giving the face more character. I was able to also add in some fine highlights around the eyes, maybe the suggestion of some wrinkles. I was looking at bird eyes for reference and they have some kind of wrinkly skin around the eyes, so there was room there for experimentation. Also on the mouth slash beak area, 
I started building out some textures using a sheet of paper to mask off one side while creating a shadow or a highlight on the other side. And that gave it a more natural look and it was easier to get the blending with the airbrush than when I was trying to do a similar look with the paintbrush. The lines were too harsh for this model. Once I had the lights and darks pretty well established, I coated the whole thing with a gloss sealer to protect that base coat as I experimented with colors and more textures on top. The gloss didn't look very good though, and it was also going to be hard to paint on, so I took down that sheen with some steel wool. And because I already have these lights and darks, I now don't have to necessarily mix my colored paint to make it lighter or darker. I can simply glaze it over top of these established values. So that made it a lot easier to experiment with the colorations. And I settled on this turquoise and green color palette. I focused with more of the turquoise on the highlights. So I've got really cool highlights and then more of the green in the darker areas, even verging into some red mixed in for the darker shadows. I'm imagining this as sort of a forest dragon who would be somewhat camouflaged amongst the trees. I worked on the eyes some more, adding in a lot of yellow, which looks really nice against that green and pops well. Again, I went with the bird-like inspiration for that style and used some bird images as a reference. Over the yellow base, I added in some oranges and purples to make it look more interesting and give it depth. I went with the white with some of that turquoise mixed in so that the highlighting is consistent with the rest of the dragon. I tried something interesting on the eyes. I used some epoxy resin and spread that over the eye area. The goal was to give it depth in addition to gloss, but there were some challenges because the eyeballs aren't separate pieces, so the <laughs> resin wanted to drip into other areas. Also, I got some air bubbles trapped in there, so I had to sand it down and do it again another two or three times, but it worked well enough in the end. And then I sealed all the rest of the painted areas using a matte varnish. And with that, the painting is complete. Next up will be to create a magical backdrop for this forest dragon. This has certainly been more of an exploratory process than a tutorial, since I didn't know where I was going to end up when I started, and I also was just learning how to airbrush. So I hope that you've enjoyed this process. Thank you for watching. Until next time.